Alright and gents, one versus you reaction and this is what if we destroy the moon by the channel real life lore Yeah, okay, everybody wants to destroy the moon apparently I saw the video about you know destroying the moon from Kuzgazad and that was interesting one too This fight from real life lore Kuzgazad went really scientific because that's what it is scientific channel This is more stat based channel so it's gonna be fun a different way of seeing it but yeah it doesn't, you know, if we destroy the moon, I guess, you know, all the astronomers in the world would rejoice, I guess, because they hate the moon. They hate the moon because they can't look at the stars when the moon's out, uh, obviously. Uh, I don't know, if you lose great view. Uh, I think there will be a ring system for a short time. Yeah, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson once said that in one of the podcasts. Yeah, right? Yeah, I think it would. I don't know. So there will be that. There will be, you know, issue uh, with uh, rot Earth's rotation for damn sure because Earth rotation is going, you know, slowly uh, slowing down, I guess, because of the moon. There will be day when, you know, moon and Earth will be locked because, you know, moon is basically slowing the Earth. So there will be issue there too. I don't know. We'll see what more effect there is going to be. Real Life Lore is a great channel. I've reacted quite a few videos from this channel already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cast. There's a playlist I wrote for it. Check out the playlist too, like CGB Grey, Chris Gazat, you know, all the sarcastic products and internet historian. And yeah, let's do this one. This video is made possible by Skillshare, home to over 15,000 classes that could teach you a new life skill. The first 500 people to sign up using the link in the description will get a two-month free trial. The moon has always been an intimate part of humanity's existence. You can see it from anywhere on Earth, and the effect that it's had on our planet and culture is beyond significant. But, hypothetically, what would happen to us if we destroyed the whole thing? In 1958, the Soviet Union was beating America in the race to space. In response, the United States developed a plan called Project A-119, which involved detonating a nuclear bomb on the moon's surface. Knowing the explosion would be visible to people worldwide, the US government believed Project A-119 would provide both a morale boost to the American people and a show of force to intimidate the Soviet Union. Thankfully, the plan- I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we as humans are so childish. I mean, in order to boost morale of a country, if we are leading the world or not, let's blow something on the moon. So there'll be shiny, you know, all the mushroom shiny cloud there. Like, look at that shit. I did that. What did that actually achieve? What actually did that? Nothing. We just blew a bomb on the moon. Look at that shit. <laughs> That's so childish mentality, man was scrapped in favor of landing actual people on the moon, but nuclear weapons wouldn't really be enough to destroy the moon anyway. To even come close, we would have to detonate an explosive up to several billion times more powerful than the entire nuclear arsenal of the world, yeah. which means that destroying the moon is currently impossible. But assuming that we develop some amazing destructive technology in the future and annihilate the moon, what would happen to us here on Earth? First, if the moon shattered into tiny little pieces, they might eventually coalesce into a brilliant ringed system around our planet. Fragments of the moon would frequently rain down onto the Earth's surface like meteorites, but not as destructive. While some meteorites hit Earth at speeds of over 100 kilometers. Yeah, okay. Every time, you know, lots of people even say that, that, you know, if we blow up the moon, uh, the fragments would not be big enough to hurt us, but... I mean, it depends. I mean, people are people are missing this uh, critical point here. It depends how you blew up the moon. I mean, you can't predict accurately how things will go on. If if it will be blown up properly, you know, proportionately all over, you know, in that sense. Like, uh, will it uh, form a co complete ring around the Earth with every fragments being small, or will there be a, one or two big chunks that gets out from the moon? And oh, they remained intact, like a massive asteroid that took out dinosaurs or something. Because what if, uh, you know, big enough asteroid type of rocks stays intact and only other parts get destroyed at, uh, you know, really small parts. And these big rocks collide onto Earth. That would be really bad. I mean, you can't predict that, you know, every, so every piece of the moon will be uh, very small that it won't hurt the Earth uh, when it rains down. You can't predict that. When you blow up the moon using nukes, because now you're throwing nukes at one side of the moon. Now, you know, you can't predict that all parts will be small. Some chunks could be really big, like massive asteroid. And that could rain down on the planet and that would be really bad. I mean, if you pump energy inside the moon and blow it up like that, maybe then you can, you know, basically imagine that, yeah, chunks will be smaller. 
But if you throw nukes at it from one side, you can know that, you know, uh, at the start, maybe from the other side, the cracks could basically, you know, uh, cracks could develop and suddenly massive chunk of the moon get, you know, gets ripped apart uh, before everything else destroyed at the re really small rocks. So that could happen. Big asteroid could, you know, fall down onto the earth. But yeah, ring system would happen. I, I remember somebody saying that. I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson in the same podcast. But I'm pretty sorry he said that too, like there would be a ring there. Kilometers per second, these lunar fragments would only be traveling at a fraction of that, around 8 kilometers per second. So their damage could be pretty bad, but not entirely catastrophic. Without the moon obscuring light from less bright objects, more stars would be visible from Earth's surface, there and night go. skies would be significantly brighter, which would hopefully be a consolation for not being able to witness a solar eclipse ever again. Of course, without the moon, the tidal forces on the world's oceans and lakes would drop dramatically as well. Tides wouldn't completely go away because the sun also exerts a tiny force on them, but they would drop to about 25% of their current levels. Surfing as a sport would be severely less cool, and coastal communities would have to adapt to lives with a far smaller tides than usual. However, perhaps the most catastrophic effect that would happen without a moon would be the extreme change in Earth's axial tilt. Yeah, so tides uh, would be less intense, obviously. Moon's tide is somewhere like two-thirds of the tides that we have. Other is sun's tides. So sun and moon both causes the tides. That's why when there's full moon, so basically when the you know so sun, earth, and moon aligns, it's called Sijigi or something like that. When the three gets aligned, it basically amplifies the you know tides. That's why you have higher tides during that time. And because of these tides, uh, so Earth rotation was sl is slowing down because you know basically Earth rotation is a bit faster than than the you know Moon's uh, basic uh, you know movement uh, because uh, Moon takes 30 days uh, to rotate while uh, you know Earth rotates on its axis every 24 hours. So obviously Earth rotation is much faster, and so basically you know uh, Earth movement is you know causing the tides to go more I guess ahead. And moon is trying to pull it back because of from its gravity so this is causing the earth to slow down so there will be one day where you know uh, moon will be only showed at one point at one place because the earth and the moon both will be locked basically Earth spins on its axis currently at 23.4 degrees. Over a period of tens of thousands of years, however, that tilt varies between 22.1 degrees to 24.5 degrees. The moon acts as a stabilizing force on this tilt, keeping it between these values. But without it, this stability would be lost forever. Earth's tilt could exceed 45 degrees at times in this scenario, spinning on its side. This would be very weird to get used to over time, because the poles wouldn't necessarily always be cold places all right I'm not I'm not gonna lie I never thought of that but god damn that is a real real issue that is true isn't it the moon is not there to stabilize of course you know this could happen and if this happens and you know, obviously Sun uh, is going to show its uh, side more towards Antarctica or something like that that would cause strong strong weather like you know strong hurricanes strong tornadoes massive storms uh, you know, because now the you know the Earth is tilted that much, so now the you know uh, basically Sun's rays are not uh, hitting at the equator. Obviously, now it's hitting like in the South Pole or something like that. So that would cause massive weather issues. That would be really bad, man and the equator wouldn't necessarily always be a warm place. Imagine the extreme changes that would happen if all the ice in Antarctica... And yeah, Antarctica would melt, so obviously lots of land would go underwater too, just like how we are feeling global warming would do it melted and exposed a new continent open to human settlement, or if the equator began to be a region that got regular snow and ice of their own. Ice ages would hit different parts of the planet at different times every few thousands of years. But that's the thing. These changes wouldn't be immediate and you wouldn't notice much of a change in your lifetime. But fast forward maybe 5,000 years into the future and Earth could be totally unrecognizable, which in a geological time frame is basically instant. Sure, moon fragments would probably rain down to our surface and cause some damage and the severe... 
to humans that wouldn't be an issue but i'm pretty sure you know uh, the basically animals and things would get affected because 5000 years you know uh, it does cause issues to species if they're, when they're trying to migrate from one place to another they would constantly have to be on the move in this sense and that would cause lots of species to go extinct reduction in tides would be weird for some people to get used to, but if the moon were to be destroyed, it would not cause an instant apocalypse. The real damage to our planet wouldn't be obvious until far into the future. Perhaps the most terrible part about destroying the moon for us in the present would be robbing us of our stepping stone out into the rest of the universe. Fate and circumstance gave civilization on Earth an incredible gift in the moon, a practice test nearby to home for space missions, and a natural launch pad into the rest of the solar system. Without it, this natural advantage would be permanently lost. But thankfully, since we live in reality and we won't actually destroy it, we may take advantage of it again soon. If you want to take advantage of your own stepping stone towards a new project or business, then I suggest that you check out Skillshare.com. Yeah, people, go to Skillshare.com for says RLL6 and support this channel. Yeah, I don't think, you know, destroying the moon would be nothing. Uh, you know, there's a reason why, you know, asteroids like Apophis, obviously there's very less less chance of that, that hitting Earth, you know, but still, people, whenever an asteroid is coming, people are talking about, you know, nudge it aside or, you know, changing its trajectory rather than blowing it up. Because if you blow it up, now there are more chunks that are coming towards the Earth now. Same thing applies to the moon. Yes, when, if you blow up the moon, there's a chance that all pieces will be so small it won't matter. But there's also a chance that one or two chunks could be uh, really big, like the asteroid that destroyed, you know killed all the dinosaur. Uh, 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 ch big chunks could be like that. That would basically screw up the entire planet. Basically, it w would do the same thing as it you know happened during the dinosaur time. So you can't know that that all part all the rocks would be so small it won't matter. Some rocks could be bigger, even bigger than the uh, asteroid that took out the dinosaur. Who the hell knows? So, you know, blowing up the moon is never good. You can never know if the chunks are going to be bigger or smaller. You can't predict that. So th there's a risk. Uh, there's risk there. But yeah, why, why would anybody want to destroy the moon? I mean, that's stupid. But yeah, it's a fun thought experiment. Alright, people, well, if you like my Rick's and like and subscribe, check out the Rick's and there's a link in the description. Check out the cast with the playlist, check out the end card, and I'll see you next time.